It is November the 8th, 2016, and I've got to show you something here that may not be of any great value, but I thought they were kind of interesting. These are uh, mercury vapor rectifiers, and they're called um, uh, Recticon. It's got a number out there. They look brand new. You look and look at the filaments, and they're very straight. You're probably not going to be able to see the detail that I can see here. They're full of mercury, just puddles of mercury in them. Got them at a estate sale. <clears throat> I looked them up on the internet. They were made around uh, 1918 to 1920, and they were battery charger rectifiers. Pretty cool. Almost a hundred years old. Maybe they are a hundred. I don't know if they were, I didn't see anywhere any were made in 1916, but, and there's, like I say, there's puddles of mercury in it. Anyway, when you get these things, and, and this might be a, a value to uh, some of the new uh, uh, people into electronics, and you measure the, uh, see here's my, put our meter in R times one. I believe you'll be able to see this. I don't know if you want to. Let me see here in the camera. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, and we put our probes together. Okay, let's make sure we don't drag it off in the floor. I'm just using an old analog R times one scale, and uh, it's zeroed out. And then you put one here put one here say man that is dead short well it's really not and you do this one and you say same thing but like I say you look at the filaments and they just look pristine maybe these things have never been used well <clears throat> what that tells me is uh, they're probably very low voltage filaments so even though you would measure them short and you wouldn't go oh well let's put this in the trash can Another thing uh, that's unique about this one is the ones that I've seen on YouTube. There is a couple out there about the these types of uh, mercury vapor rectifier, but they have the plate cap up here and the anode connections up here. And this one, the anode connection is right here on the base. You can actually see the wire coming out from underneath and connecting to it. So we have the cathode here and the anode here. A pair of them. So the way that I approach to this is uh, I took a uh, socket, of course. I, this is a 5-volt, 30-amp transformer. Put it on a Variac. Turned it all the way down. Uh, I had to make a connection here. Let me go ahead and put this on. This is so we can connect a wire to the anode. Not too tight. Screw it in. Make sure it's off. I turned up the voltage. I started out and turned up the voltage very slowly. There you go. Until see, I got to one and a half volts. We pull this thing off, and I'll show you. Yeah, look at that. All of that, uh, all of that ugly-looking stuff there is actually mercury. It's actually shiny from the inside. <clears throat> That's one and a half volts at. 10.6 amps so it draws a lot of current it takes one heck of a <coughs> filament supply 10 amp one and a half volt anyway that's what I've got that's what I got coming in here so this one will supply up to 5 volts at 30 amps so we have no worries there okay uh, being a battery charge I said well this got to be low voltage stuff so I had a transformer here this is a uh, if you put the secondaries in series, you can get as much as 36 volts and 8 amps out of it. So we've got lots of current. We'll let this thing warm up just a minute, and then I'll hook it up, and I'll show you how this thing actually works. It's actually pretty interesting. Okay, well, I've actually got it hooked up right now, but it hasn't warmed up enough yet, and here's the voltage, the DC voltage, that it's producing across this 30-ohm resistor. So we've got it in DC. It's just basically nothing. So it appears that it's not working. But we got to let it warm up. Once it gets nice and warm, yeah, it's pretty surprising 
It'll handle actually quite a lot of current. So we've got to wait a few more minutes. Okay, it's been about a half hour and um, I was monitoring the output voltage and it just didn't want to start. So I got out a, uh, a heat gun here and I heated the uh, bulb up until I vaporized more mercury and it still just didn't quite want to start and then I raised the uh, filament voltage just slightly. I don't know what it is now. It's just a little bit above one and a half. Not much more. Uh, probably still less than two. And then click it just snapped on and there it is. There's its output. Now <clears throat> the uh, input voltage let me show you the input. The input naturally is AC. Oh darn. Yeah, well I got it on AC. Now I'll have to show you that one again. Let's see. No, th th that's correct. Uh, th there is its AC. 41 volts. And it's DC across the resistor is uh, 10. 10.2. 10 yeah, I had, it, I had it on the wrong scale a while ago. That's just DC. So we're dropping 30 volts across the, uh, the bulb. Let's see if I can... This thing is so bright, I think it's just going to overwhelm the camera. I don't think you're going to be able to see much of anything. Let's turn out a light here. Let me put this thing in manual mode. Okay, let's see here. No, this one doesn't do manual mode in the in video. That's with it, uh, no anode current, and that's with anode current. You see it's slightly brighter, not good enough. Okay, here it is, different camera that I can control the, uh, control a little bit more. That's without any anode current, and as soon as I plug in the, the big transformer, there's with the anode current. Can't see a whole lot more, huh? It gets a little bit brighter. Let me unplug it. There it is unplugged. There it is plugged back in. Okay. Let's um, see if we can keep this camera rolling here. And switch over to... Um, Uh, a different load so we're drawing a lot more current. I think it'll supply quite a bit of current. Let's unplug it. I know this camera is kind of dark but uh, okay there it is. I'm trying to look right between the filament and and the plate. The anode is right behind it now I'll plug it in. So we'll start drawing anode current. complicated does it have to be? Mm -hmm. Just knock the wire off or something. Okay, there it is without any anode current. I had to raise the filament voltage again and get it a little bit hotter. Now when I plug in and we start drawing anode current, it gets a lot brighter. I can turn this thing down now. I was trying to uh, get down in there and see if we could uh, see the purple in there. I was, I was actually seeing it earlier. Now we're getting 12.7 volts across 8 ohms, so that's a, that's over 1.5 amps. So these little things are, are, are not wimpy. Pretty amazing. Yeah, the, the temperature, I'm discovering, I didn't know this until now, I was playing with it a little earlier. The temperature is very critical. Very critical. 
turn it back up there so you can see it. Yeah. Well, anyway, there it is for what it's worth. Probably not much. But if you find any of these things laying around, they're like 100 years old, so be careful with them. Have fun. They're full of mercury. They only take one and a half, two volts or so of the filament. You'll have to make that adjustable probably. Uh, I don't know what their maximum voltage and current is, but um, and I imagine that thing's pretty darn hot right now. Uh, well, let's see how hot it is. Let's see. I was just thinking, see. oh yeah, see, this thing, this thing says it's 250 degrees. So it would uh, burn you. I can sort of smell it a little bit, and it's probably because that thing's resting against it. Yeah, see, it's melting that a little bit. Yeah, that smells like rubber burning. Ouch. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely see it flare up when I hook up uh, the anode. Turn the camera back down here. There you go. Always having fun. There's its output voltage across the uh, 8 ohm load. As I start turning the filament down, you probably just kind of see the overall. I think it'll, at some point, it'll probably become critically cool. That's right, where to use it. And I guess just kind of snap off. Well, no, not yet. Well, I guess it's hot enough now that there, well, the bulb just went out. Let's see. Yeah, we're not conducting at all. And then, let's see if we can, uh, Watch them both at once here. Then when we start cranking up the filament, see it looks like it's there. We go. Get the glare off. See it's not conducting yet. It gets hotter and hotter. It's kind of trying. And then at some point, there, there, click. Yeah, it just kind of snaps on. And there's it. It's back to its 12 volts. So. The, there is obviously some critical temperature that the mercury has to be at before it'll conduct. And above that, it doesn't seem to matter. I'm getting it brighter and brighter. I don't want to burn the darn thing in two, but yeah, above, once it starts, it's uh, it seems to be just fine. Let's see. Turn this thing down a little bit. Goodness, it thing's bright. Well, this is fun measuring these old things. It's amazing that after right at a hundred years, they still work. And uh, it's pumping quite a bit of current through that little 8 ohm uh, resistor there. Let's see what his temperature is. Wow, look at that. That's depending on where I point it. Wow, 600 degrees? Maybe I better not touch that, huh? Alright, thanks for watching.